Hello and welcome to McGrossom Sauce, the podcast all about helping entrepreneurs level up and become awesome. Each week I bring you actionable advice to help both you and your business grow. This week, I interviewed Curran Najawan. Curran is someone who truly believes in the value of people, of diving deep to better get to know them. His brand, Ju, which stands for Just Be, is all about making connections that are real. In this episode, we talked about his childhood, his immigrant upbringing, and what led him to find his calling to build the best relationships possible. So let's dive in with Karen Najawan. Karen, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really happy to have you. I know you're an amazing human being. So just thank you for taking your time to, to be with me today. Thank you, my friend. You also are an amazing human being. So I'm grateful to be in good company. Two amazing human beings just righting all the wrongs of the world, just, just making all your problems disappear, just right here on screen, man. Life's just easier that way. It is. Just listen to us. You don't have to listen to any gurus. We, we will sort you out for, forever, basically. Just listen to us just on repeat all the time. Our voices are all unique. <laughs> better than a white noise machine. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, I want to dive in straight, with, like straight in with you, and I want, <laughs> I want to bring up something that you've probably forgotten about, but it has stayed with me. Do you remember just how we met? We didn't meet face to face. We sort of met like digitally, like people are doing now. Instagram. Um, yeah, it was Instagram, and basically, it was around this time last year. You basically slid into my DMs <laughs> with a video message. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you were basically just like a super nice, genuine guy. And I know I wasn't the, I'm not the only one you're sending video messages to, but um, you basically just popped up and said, hey, Karen here, I noticed you're in Toronto. I see that you're a local. I think we could uh, uh, really uh, benefit from being in each other's circles. I'd really like to invite you to uh, some events that I put on, things like that. And so that's- You're right, hard. that was almost a year ago. Exactly. And so um, that has stayed with me because I'm pretty sure I wasn't sending video notes uh, to anyone back then. And I wasn't, I say back then a year ago, I wasn't sending voice notes. I wasn't like super, I wasn't super involved in other people's lives and I wasn't doing any other reach outs and stuff like that. And that stayed with me. I think you were one of the first people to ever send me a video note, uh, like a video message through, through the DM. So that stayed with me. I was like, what is this? And it was novel to me at the time. And I know I'm not the only one you're sending these things to. I'm sure you're sending a hundred a day. And even back then you were probably doing the same thing. But I want to ask, what was the thought process to even send one of these things to anyone ever? Like, why did you think that would work? Man, there's so many ways I could take this conversation. And let me just start by saying, Typically, when it comes to building relationships or growing your network or messaging somebody you don't know or prospecting, most people just go for the kill, right? They go for the kill. They try to make a deal. They try to make the transaction. They pitch you. They sell you out of nowhere. They just assume that they know all of your problems. They know what keeps you up at night. They know exactly why I can't sleep. And every message is so cookie cutter. Every single message in today's world is such a cookie cutter, copy and paste, insert name here, was checking out your profile, great to connect, looks like we got a lot of synergies, full stop. Right. And I have been sent enough horrible message, horrible messages to feel like I was just another number or I was just another copy and paste. And the old me fell into that trap saying, hey, I could probably contact more people if I just cookie cutter approach everyone. And what ended up actually happening was that I was building BS types of relationships mm. with intent to begin with was wrong. Mm. My intent was wrong. My intent was I need to build this relationship with, with Nick. So one day he will X. So one day she will that, right? There was always this expectation of the intent and it took years for me to figure out, holy crap, it's, I'm approaching relationships backwards. Mm. And then when I started to realize that communication is more tonality and body language and visual, not just the written word, I said, hmm, what if I do something no one is doing, at least at the time? What if I do something very unique? Hey, I like being on camera. Hey, Instagram and email, 
I've got an option to send you a video message instead of an email. I could be like everyone else and send you a quick text DM, DM or a quick cold email. But if I send you a video and I say your name, you know that that message was meant for you and only you. Yeah. And you're right. I send a ton of video messages every single day, every single week. Maybe not every single day, but every single week. I've probably sent thousands of video messages. Wow. And what that done, what that's done is brought in thousands of very unique replies. Mm -hmm. Ones that you can't replicate through text message, ones you can't replicate anywhere else. My impetus for starting video messaging was how would I want someone to reach out to me who was a complete stranger, yet it looks like I've known that guy or that girl for years. Yeah. If I could show up on video and immediately within three seconds make you feel like, hey, we go way back, we're friends, we're cut from yeah. the same cloth, we've got some sort of similarities, yeah. then I just bypassed months and months and months of back and forth BS email exchanges that never go anywhere and the conversations remain on the platform. Insert Instagram, insert Facebook, insert LinkedIn, insert Zoom now, right? How many people are we meeting on a day-to-day -day basis? where all we end that conversation with, we end the conversation with, let's stay in contact. <laughs> let's keep yeah. in touch. Let's connect. Let's keep in touch. Yeah. Start like, does that actually happen more times than not? No, not in a million years. Do people actually follow up with what they're say with what they say they're going to do. Yeah. So when I say to somebody, Hey, let's stay in touch. You will hear back from me in the next 30 days or 60 days or 90 days at some point, because I genuinely want to see what you're up to. And if there's a way that you've got an opportunity for me to plug one of your holes or make an introduction or invite you to an event, I'm going to do it. Whether the event is free, $10, uh, $300 or $1,000, it doesn't matter. It's not even about the monetary value. It's if you've got something that I've gone through and I can help and I can be an ear for you, and you feel comfortable, then amazing. I'm literally going to follow up with you. And that's up to me. That's, that's, uh, I'm so glad that was the answer. I'm so glad that that's like, that came from the heart there. Um, I'm telling you it worked on me. Like I, that's, I didn't bring this up just to like have something to chew on to, to talk to you today. I brought this up because I remember it staying with me and it was all of like 30 seconds. It might've been less than that. And I remember it was, it, was it, was, like, it was less than 15 actually. Well, there you go. See, and I remember it staying with me and, and I, you're right. I don't remember everyone on earth sending video messages, even just a year ago. I do not remember that. Um, and that's why when I say you were one of the first, probably the first that ever got into my phone doing that, it was, it was revolutionary for me. I'm like, Oh my God, this is, and I can't, I can't ignore it then. Cause it's like the play button is such a, such an enticing thing to hit. You're like, I can't help. And that's <laughs> why I send a lot of voice notes because they're quick. Um, I can do video notes a, a lot as well, but I'm a big fan of sending voice notes because you mm -hmm. can't help that little blue bar fills up your phone. You just can't help, but no, someone has catered this to me. There's no way this is like stock sound this mm -hmm. is someone's voice about to speak to me hey i noticed your profile or i saw that you did this and that i think we have a lot in common and instant bond and it's like you said you just you just circumvented five ten years like you it makes it makes you you feel like you've been knowing this person for for like like pretty much you grew up with them like your childhood friends right and so there's a power in that and there's a there's a power and there's a there's um almost an electricity in that authenticity that almost can't be replaced and you get tingles just thinking about it. You're like, I can build a, a, a bridge here to this person. This is a cold reach out, but I could warm this up real fast. And that's another thing I wanted to, to, to talk to you. Your, your business, your brand is just be, right? Um, um, and it's, it's all about building relationships, right? That is pretty much your brand. And I know you and your brand and your business, you've basically staked your claim on this, on building relationships. It matters to you. You're very passionate about it. Like this is the house that you've, that you've, this is the foundation you've built your house upon, right? Um, uh, building relationships. I can tell you're passionate about it, but that's not enough. Like I'm passionate about tons of things that I'm never talking to people in the world about. Like I have hobbies and interests that are passions that I'm not bringing to the fore. Why is this passion 
so strong that you know you can make it your full-time job, that you know you can brand yourself around, that you know you can dive in head first and be all about this. All like why relationships? Man, great question. There's, I feel like every question you were asking, there's five directions I want to take it in. And they're all <laughs> equally as important to the story. Sure. And to me, the word relationships is not just like, hey, who's in your, who's in your network or who's on your, you know, who can you text today that can do this for me later? Or, hey, man, how many right. contacts do you have on LinkedIn or how many followers do you have? To me, relationships is how many people do you trust? And more importantly, how many people trust you? And for me, when I first heard the phrase, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with, I looked at my five people and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. I'm a byproduct of my environment mm -hmm. and the five closest people to me are not the five that are going to fuel me forward. Right. And if people don't fuel you forward, they keep you stuck or they keep you held back. And I found myself in those rooms where I couldn't find my tribe. I couldn't find my family. I couldn't find the people, couldn't find the partner to push me forward. And when your environment is normal, you think it's just normal. You're like, Hey, well, I guess everyone's like this. I guess everyone lives this way. I guess nobody has a good network. I guess everyone goes to shitty networking events. I guess I'm not meant to go chase my dreams. I'm not meant to play big. Who am I to create this or invent that? And what happens is that something as small as the people you hang out with becomes restrictive to your dreams. It becomes restrictive to your being. It becomes it changes your dialogue. It changes your thoughts. It changes your narrative. It changes what you think about right before you go to bed. It changes what you think about the first thing in the morning of like, I'm not good enough or why me or that can never be me. So the first thing I'll say is that relationships to me have helped me become a better person hmm. because I've been able to surround myself with really cool, honest people that just want the best for me. And in turn, they've helped shine this light on me where I always saw a shadow. And they're like, no, dude, you, you're just as bright as anyone else. You, you know, you, you're meant to shine. And when someone encourages you to think bigger or play bigger or show up bigger, you feel like you can do anything you want. You feel like you can take over the world. You feel like everything aligned with your core just makes sense. Right. So that's kind of the, the first thing is that relationships to me are much more than friendships to me. Even friendships are like, is like such a surface level word because how many true friends does one really have today? Maybe five, maybe three, maybe 10 if you're like super, but how many people really know your deepest, darkest fears and your hmm. secrets? And the other reason why relationships is so important to me and why I'm so passionate about what I do is when I grew up, I grew up in a family which was super loving, super amazing, but there was a lot of conflicts in the house. There was a lot of arguments. There was a lot of challenges. Being from India added a different dynamic when I moved to Canada, just different challenges, different cultural norms, had to yeah. literally got dropped in a brand new environment. So when I was a kid and I'd be on my, in my bedroom and I'd be hearing my grandparents fight downstairs arguing, you know, the little kid in me would open up my door, go hang out on the doorstep, try to peek through and see if I could see them arguing. And just for a moment, think that, hey, if I break up this fight, if I just go downstairs and show my face, maybe they'll just stop fighting for a second. Hmm. Maybe I could be the guy that can just quickly showcase my face and that'll force them to distract themselves from the argument and focus on me. And being the grandson, maybe just, you know, just think about love, think about family, think about connection for a moment. And then I started to see the same patterns in my household, even with my, when my parents would argue, you know, I'd be listening in the, in the bedroom and I'd just open the door. I'd go in with the sole intent of just being seen for like a second. Mm. I didn't even need anything. I just heard them fighting. My cue was go in the room, stop the fight, stop the argument and go back and disappear. And what I found was generally when I would leave that room, the fights would stop because people would say, Hey, look, we have a kid in the, in the house or we don't want him to see or whatever that was. And really what I was doing 
was I was just creating a space where people felt comfortable just to be themselves for a minute. And I started building this relationship with my grandma and my mom on such a deep level where I was just the guy who gave them a, a voice. I was the guy to listen and not speak. I was the guy that you could shed all your problems or share whatever's not working for you. And I'd say, wow, that's, that's amazing. Tell me more. Or like, wow, that must be so difficult. And just be with them in the, in the moment without any sort of expectation of I've got somewhere else to be, or I've got all the answers. Cause that's the farthest from the truth. And that really pattern from being a child to going through same things as a teenager to the same things at shitty networking events, it's all the same. It's a part of me just wants to be that safe person for someone else who doesn't have a voice, which is why all my events, all my dinners, all my virtual events, all my in-person events, all my conversations are centered around making the other person feel safe. That's, that's like a harrowing story. And I can't believe that this is what we're talking about today because I, it's crazy how I think we're more alike than, than even I realized because I also grew up in not a, not a violent household, but a very argumentative household. And um, especially through the formative years of my life up until really my teens, my parents fought a lot. I can't speak to the immigrant part of your story as I was born here. Um, but I can speak to the, um, and I feel your pain with the, they did love each other, but there was constant conflict. My household was mm -hmm. full of conflict. And to say my, my household was full of verbal abuse would not be, in, would not be incorrect. It was full mm -hmm. of verbal abuse. Not physical, it was never domestic, but mm -hmm. I'm no stranger to conflict of people as well. But it never dawned on me to be the lightning rod to ever get involved or to ever take center stage. And it's crazy to me that even as a child, you had the wherewithal to say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna be the lightning rod here and I'm just gonna walk in and maybe not the lightning rod, maybe they don't vent to me and tell me about the problems at work. I'm only seven years old or whatever. Um, but I'll definitely be the, um, the stop gap here. I'll definitely be the thing that walks right into the room. I now am the center of attention. Now all eyes are on me. And maybe there's a bit of prevention here. Maybe I can do some bit of preventative maintenance here. Maybe I can stop what's going on here. I, I never dawned on me to do that in my own life. And um, I don't know, man, like that's just tons of credit should be given to you now and you should feel very proud about even taking on that mantle. A lot of people take on burdens all the time, but more into adulthood. I've never even heard of anyone as a child, like it's always kids trying to run away from things like that. They're always trying to shield themselves, lock themselves in a closet or hide under a bed. I've never heard of anyone taking responsibility for their family's troubles at such a young age. So that's, that's incredible. I think we share the same kind of experiences, but how we handled them is polar opposites because I was not in the mind fr the frame of mind to do what you did. So that's, that's amazing. And it sounds like that might have been the catalyst or at least planted a small seed in you, which is now blossoming it where you are now in your life to, to do what you're doing now. It was definitely a catalyst moment, but it was one of those catalyst moments that I had long forgotten about. And man, kids see everything right? Kids hear everything. They see everything. They may not act on it, but they're understanding what's happening. And even when I started my business and even for the last four years that I've been hosting dinners and just bringing people together over food and really just conversation and creating that safe space, I still forget sometimes about my why. I still forget about that moment when I was a youngster in the bedroom. I, I tend to forget about that because it's such a early part of my childhood and so much has happened since that it's not that those thoughts have disappeared or they've been buried. They were just so long ago that I just don't think about them that much. And when I really, I find I, I, I rethink about that moment, every single event that I host, every single dinner that I have, every single event I do for a company or for entrepreneurs, it reinvigorates to me when I start shining the light on people, like people shine, shine the light on me and I see them 
seeing more in themselves than, than they ever have before in one of my rooms, that is a feeling that just fires me up on such a level that you can ask my partner, Brandy, that every event that I host, like an hour before the event, even till this day, and I've hosted 160, even till this day, I'm nervous. I don't want to do it. I say, hey, oh, I, have an, I have an event tonight to this day, whether it's a two hour event or a two day event, every single event I host, because I know what I'm creating. I know the rooms are about to get vulnerable. I know the weight of the conversations and the burden and the emotions and the, the therapy that's about to happen in the, in these rooms. Mm-hmm. And, and I still get nervous and I still get, you know, cold feet half hour before my events, but all it takes is two minutes into that conversation or two minutes into that event where I just see people and I smile and they smile and we start getting, and we start getting into really good conversation that it just refuels what that why is. And then I leave every dinner super energized, reaffirmed and reconfirmed that this is my purpose. I've actually been to one of these events, one of these dinners with you and, and we've had to do it digitally because yeah. <laughs> of the times that we're in, which is fine. It wasn't any less intimate. Like, like I think everyone is figured out by now what Zoom is or Skype. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know anyone who's not using Zoom. Zoom seems to be the, uh, uh, the go-to tool, um, but it wasn't any less intimate and, and it's almost more convenient to just pop onto your computer, meet people for the first time. And I will say that when I attended one of your events, uh, I was shocked at my own level of vulnerability. I'm like, I'm telling these people I've never, they seem like nice guys. Like they seem like nice guys and girls, but like, I've never, like, these are strangers to me. Like we're just meeting, but we got really close really quickly. And I was really grateful for that. And I think the more I attend these events that you host, I can build even stronger relationships. So I, I can tell that you feel fulfilled. I, I, I get what you're saying. You feel a sense of fulfillment when you leave them when they're done for the night because I felt fulfilled when I left. I'm like, I'm, I was like sweating and I was like, like really engaged. And at the end of it, I was like, that was like a good workout. Like I need a, a, a like a, a yeah. shaker full of protein or something to refuel because it's like a friggin' workout. And I felt fulfilled, but also exhausted at the same time. But it was rewarding and it was a very harrowing experience and, and people are sharing right back and, and we're trying to solve each other's problems. And, and it's crazy that even you and I have the same problem uh, growing up and you know, that's part of what you're doing. You're bringing people together. There's something really important you just said, Nick, and you could go to the gym and have a physical experience, a physical workout, and you might be sore for an hour, a day, maybe two days. Sometimes you might be sore for a week. Let's say you haven't been to the gym in a long time. That same 60 minutes you spend on an emotional experience, whether it's therapy, whether it's going deep within yourself, whether it's just an hour of journaling, journaling, an hour of meditation, or just inner work to some degree. And that feeling could last with you for years right? Not just a day, not just a week. And when I leave these dinners, yeah, I'm energized, but I'm also exhausted because it felt like a three hour workout Hmm. where I know that, Hey, this is going to be at least a seven to 10 day recovery period after an event sometimes because you hear so many stories and you can relate to so many different experiences. So just wanted to say that like, You can go to the gym for an hour and be sore for a day or a couple days. But if you're willing to go deep within yourself and have an emotional exercise uh, that, you know, you'll be quote sore. You could be sore for weeks or months or years. I mean, I'm not sore right now, but like this (laughs) has been like, even like, I didn't think we would, you and I would take this emotional roller coaster ride. Like I, I didn't think that I would like now be thinking about like I moved like three or four times in my childhood. Like I remember the house I grew up in. And then when I was eight, we had to move. And then there were some real formative years between eight and 13. And my parents were still hating each other. And then, and then, and then, and then, and now like this, like this 15 minute conversation has made me like take a, a, a super fast, like light speed trip through all my formative years up until now. And even that is like work in my mind as we're talking. And so, yeah, like there's no, this is so much more valuable than like currency. Like there's no substitute for this. And, and, and we're not the first to value this deeply. 
and we're not going to be the last. And yet still, 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 this has to be preached and shouted from the rooftops and written in the sky and written on billboards. And still, this is the main, st the main message that any entrepreneur, any CEO, any business, every Gary V is talking about build better culture, build stronger relationships. This is the only thing that gets us through this grind that is called life. It's not how much money you have. It's not how many mm -hmm. properties you, you've acquired and it's not how many promotions you're getting because none of those, no one is on their deathbed saying, I wish I worked you know, 10 hours harder uh, during that, that, that time at the office where everyone was doing overtime. No, they say, Oh, I wish I treated my mom better or I shouldn't have talked yep. to her. Like those are the things you play back in your head. You don't think about work. You don't think about money. You're thinking about the relationships you have built or have not built or have let fall apart. So this is, this is like just one of those experiences for me as well. And, and um, you know, I'm really grateful that I have you in my life and that you're part of that. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that, man. And yeah, it's not about the dollars in the bank account. It's not about the size of the contract. It's like, let's say you made a thousand dollars today. You could spend that a thousand different ways, or you could go to three amazing restaurants at $300 per meal. You could go get a helicopter ride. You could buy a nice watch. You could buy some new clothes. Great. And then you're waiting for the next thousand dollars to be made. So you can go repeat and go numb yourself all, all over again. And some of my greatest moments in life, man, have nothing to do with money. It's going, getting a coffee with a friend. It's <laughs> sending somebody a postcard. It's watching a movie with my partner. It's going for a walk without our cell phones. It's the moments and it's the moments. And I'm turning 31 this year. And for me, man, it's like, I only want to live this way. Like, I don't want to be defined by anything that I own whatsoever. And I'm very, like, you know, I wear kind of the same clothes, not the same clothes. I mean, I wear the same types of clothes every single, every <laughs> Sorry, single day. Sorry, this is video. I'm not in the room with you. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I don't care if you haven't showered in four days. No, no. It's, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple guy. Uh, oftentimes when you see me, I'll be wearing like my jube hoodie. I'll be yeah. wearing, you know, my, my socks, my same shoes. Um, I'm pretty simple because I just, I, I've got nobody to impress, but like no one, I don't even need to impress myself. I just need to be okay with the guy who's going to bed every night. Yeah. Yeah. You're you really just have to look in the mirror and say, we did okay today. You and I are good. We're good. Okay. Now we can go to bed. Yeah. And I think a lot of people just have it backwards. I think a lot of people spend way too much time trying to impress others or create this persona of look how amazing my life is, or just pretending like they've got their shit together. And I talk to so many business owners every single week, man. I talk to founders and CEOs. I talk to people in human resources. Nobody has got their shit together. <laughs> no matter if they're in year one of their business, year five or year 10, everybody, every single day is just figuring out what's working and what's not working. The key is this daily self growth. The key is mm -hmm. micro self improvements. The key is just being a little bit better than you were yesterday. And that's the only measuring stick you need. You don't need to see, hey, well, Nick gets 30 downloads a month and Kern gets 20 downloads a month. So therefore, Nick has a better podcast, right? That means your measuring stick of success is the wrong measuring stick, mm -hmm. right? You could have a $10,000 week and I could have an, a $10,500 week. Does that make me better? No. Yeah. Right? It doesn't. And it's so mind-blowing that when you live in a city like Toronto and specifically, it's all about like, oh, we got to impress other people. We got to pretend like we've got everything figured out. We've, oh my God, you don't drive. You take public transit. Oh my God, I would never. Oh my God, you only eat out once a month. Like I would never. Like my value, dude, my most prized possession are all my books over there. Hands down. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, on that note, I want to leave it with this. What can I expect next from your brand? Because I know you've been working hard and you show up all the time and I think you understand. I think you've bitten down hard. I think you've, I think you've drank the entrepreneurial Kool-Aid at this point and I see you a lot and I just wanna know 
what is next for your brand? Is there half a plan? Again, you see no one has their shit together. It's all trial and error. So what's, what's next on the agenda? Um, not so much, I know this will be a success and this will be, what are you going to try? What, what, like what's next for you? Right now there is one vision and the vision is how can we replicate experiences that were once in person now virtually now what the true purpose behind that is how do we create better relationships period better relationships with your clients better relationships with your employees better relationships with your parents your wife your partner better relationships with you and yourself so what i'm doing now is i'm working with companies and hosting these events for their teams the events have nothing to do with food. They have everything to do with the type of conversation. I'm hosting these events for companies and their customers to deepen and create those relationships. We live in this world where we think we could just hide behind the latest marketing tactic and win that currency with the people that we care about. Dude, I could run a hundred dollars worth of Facebook ads and try to get you to my event, or I could just send you a quick video. What do you think is going to perform better? Well, I already know the answer to that. I already, already know, know what the answer. perform better. So where I'm shifting my focus is I'm trying to redefine how do you get in front of the people that matter the most to you? And the way I believe to do that is to bring them into your room, into your digital virtual room or in person where you control the message, you control the dialogue, and most importantly, you create and control the relationships. And that's something that doesn't matter how big your marketing budget is. Good luck doing that on Facebook or SEO or Instagram ads. But all my Facebook friends, Karen, all my Facebook friends. Yeah. You use your Facebook ads to drive <laughs> people to your in-person event or to your virtual events. Yeah. I'll, it'll be a lonely time for me, <laughs> but I got you in my corner and that's all I need. I just need, um, I just need you. That's I'm all here, I really man. need. I'm here. Uh, Karen, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, this has been enlightening and yet again, another harrowing experience that I've had with you uh, and one that I will not forget anytime soon. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, man. I appreciate you as well, man. I remember when you reached out to me a couple of weeks ago saying, hey man, I'm about to launch this podcast. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to be about. I don't know who I'm going to get. And look at you. Here you are, man. You're taking action. It's this and trial and error, man. It's this trial and error. We're going to see what works. But You're I'm glad this, man. yeah, this has worked. And uh, you know what? It's huge that you have chosen to be a part of this experience with me. So hugely grateful, man. I can't thank you enough. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you got real value from it. Talking to Curran is always a pleasure. And I'm always left feeling enlightened and invigorated every single time we talk. He's such a great guy. I'm really glad that he could feel vulnerable and open up to me. I really like that part of his childhood. I thought that was really special. And I'm really glad he was able to share that with me. If you like this episode, feel free to like and subscribe to the show. That would be a big help for me. And leave a review on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube, and everywhere where you can leave a review. As I'm trying to grow the show, every little bit helps. Stay tuned for more great content like this, and remember to stay McGrawsome.